All right, guys, we are getting uh, uh, to our lesson on Beethoven. Before we start, I just wanted to share with you, I was doing some repairs at home and then my dog walked on uh, some sandpaper and you know what it said? It says, rough, rough. So Beethoven, Ludwig van Beethoven, was born in Bonn. Western Germany in 1770. He started serious music study at the age of five and was first taught by his father. He was one of the greatest composers who ever lived. His family was musical. His grandfather and father were both singers in the state choir. Stubborn and self-involved, dramatic yet loving of his friends, Beethoven would become a virtuoso pianist and composer of nine symphonies, concertos for piano, piano sonatas, and string quartets. He was in the classical period that was characterized by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Joseph Haydn, but he was also on the cusp and it was one foot over into the romantic style led by Frederick Chopin and Franz Liszt and created a new vocabulary of humanism and enlightenment in music. Having performed brilliantly for much of his youth and to, into his early 30s, Beethoven slowly lost his hearing yet went to write many of the most important works in musical history. Early on, Johann van Beethoven noticed Ludwig van Beethoven's talent for playing. He set his sights for creating a prodigy just like Mozart had been a couple of decades before. Johann forced his son to practice day and night to reach the same level of genius. Neighbors of Beethoven remembered the small boy standing on a bench to reach the keyboard crying as his father was over him. Ludwig van Beethoven was the third Ludwig in the Beethoven family. The first one was his grandfather and the second one was his older brother who died six days after his birth. At age of 21, he moved to Vienna in Austria, where he first became famous as a pianist. He is thought to have had lessons with both Mozart and Haydn, though in the later years he didn't like to admit it. Mozart, then the greatest composer in Vienna, was generally unimpressed with other musicians being so far ahead of his peers and talent and accomplishments. No one really knows what happened at the recital when Beethoven performed for Mozart. He was 17 at the time. Mozart apparently walked out of the room saying, keep your eyes on him. Someday he will give the world something to talk about. So after moving to Vienna in his early 20s, Beethoven took lessons from Haydn the father of the symphony. And as Beethoven was stubborn and he had a habit with teachers, the two often got frustrated with each other and ultimately didn't like each other very much. His improvising skills on the piano caused a sensation. One of his contemporaries, Johann Baptist Kramer, told his students that if you haven't heard Beethoven improvise, you haven't heard improvisation. His first compositions featured solo piano. Later, he became known for, as a composer of symphonies. Beethoven's predecessors had composed for harpsichord, but Beethoven decided that he will focus his efforts on the piano an instrument that no one had yet written comprehensive work. Beethoven was sickly throughout his life. 
born at a time without modern medicine, Beethoven suffered for deafness, colitis, rheumatism, rheumatic fever, typhus, skin disorder, abscesses, various of infections, ophthalmia, inflammatory degeneration of the arteries, jaundice, chronic hepatitis, and cirrhosis of the liver. Though Beethoven attributed the beginning of his deafness to an instance in which he was startled and fell, it was likely it was a side effect of a disease he had suffered from as a child, such as typhus or smallpox. He began to hear constant buzzing at age 27. Let's listen to some of his music. <laughs> of you have heard this symphony. Now let's listen to the Moonlight Sonata that is for piano. listen a little bit to the symphony number five a little bit later in the first movement but this time this is a video
you see his famous four note motif or idea is played by many different instruments in turn even the timpani do it it's really truly great this picture shows one of beethoven's own pianos the piano was still quite a modern instrument at the time do you remember the piano from mozart's lesson it looked quite different than the pianos you have seen nowadays. As we mentioned, the piano replaced the harpsichord. However, take a look in this picture. This looks a little bit more similar to what we have seen. Look, now it has pedals. So Beethoven helped manufacturers develop new instruments. He wanted pianos with larger range of notes, more power and better pedal technology. Beethoven wrote 27 sonatas for piano as well as five concertos for piano and orchestra. A sonata is a piece with several long sections called movements. This is a recording of his pathetic sonata for piano. for you to know that he left school when he was 11 years old to help his house with income and he never learned how to multiply it or divide to his last day if he had to multiply let's say 60 times 52 he would lay out 60 52 times and add them up Beethoven started to go deaf in his late 20s and by the middle age he had completely lost his hearing according to this site. The latest research that I have read and heard is that he wasn't truly completely deaf. At first, he kept trying to perform his piano works in conducting orchestra, but he couldn't hear the other performers well enough and had to give up. A visitor to his house increasingly had to use ear trumpets like those in the picture. The composer will attach one to his ear and his visitors will shout into it. Later, even this became impossible and his friends would write their questions in a small conversation books. Several of these have survived. It's a shame we don't know what Beethoven answered because he always spoke his responses. Through all the time he continued to compose, hearing the sounds in his head rather than out loud. This recording is a short section from his seventh symphony, written at a time he would be able to hear very, very little. <laughs> an example of Beethoven's handwriting. Here is a part of the Moonlight Sonata. It was often hard to read. The publishers probably found it difficult to read and interpret what he meant exactly. This is the original manuscript. His 
last symphony, by the time he wrote his ninth last symphony, uh, remember he had sketches for a tenth symphony, but that never got published and produced. At the first performance, he had to be turned around the audience because he hadn't realized they were clapping loudly. The famous tune shown in the picture is very simple. However, it features the whole orchestra playing. He went to break with the tradition by including singers, solo singers and a choir to the final movement of the symphony. They would eventually sing the same tune in harmony with orchestra. Beethoven's Symphony No. 3 was dedicated to Napoleon. He admired Napoleon as a symbol of the revolution. And when he wrote his third symphony, he was disappointed that the French general crowned himself an emperor, and he named his symphony Eroica. He never quit his day job. He didn't like giving lessons. However, he can always has to ensure that he had a comfortable living by giving the lessons or writing work for uh, commission for and publishing his own music. Beethoven died during a thunderstorm. That's very interesting. There were thousands that joined the procession at his uh, burial. Leading composers playwrights, poets, citizens, all took part at the cemetery. His monument simply said Beethoven. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Have a great week. If you need any help or if you have any questions, please email me or text me. <laughs>